Howdy folks, it's been a while since I've made a video, but uh, in this series of videos, we're going to be constructing an LDMOS amplifier. Um, it's going to be a single LDMOS device, uh, one that's made by NXP, and I'll, I'll put the data sheet down below. Um, this one device can do up to 1800 watts, uh, but we'll, we won't be driving it that hard. Uh, it'll probably be when we're all said and done, maybe 1250, 1300 if we're lucky. Um, anyway, the boards that we're using um, come from a uh, company in Greece called dxworld-e.com. I'll put the link down below. Uh, they also sell uh, full, complete amplifiers. I chose to kind of like do the hard way. <laughs> I'm building my own um, from the boards from this uh, company. Um, what else? The uh, first thing we're gonna do in this uh, series is the machining of the pallet. Um, we have a copper heat spreader. It's 200 millimeters wide uh, by 100 millimeters uh, in length and 10 millimeters thick. Um, and uh, we'll need to machine that out and make a little uh, pocket for the LD moss to sit in, uh, just you know, ever so slight, you know, notch or trough, uh, just so that when we go to solder the LD moss, it kind of sits in place. Um, you'll see that in a little bit. Um, and then after we get the pallet all uh, built out, we'll uh, do some quick bench testing just to make sure that you know we're putting out power. And then we'll go to the assembly of the entire amplifier. We'll get an enclosure. Uh, we'll do uh, the fans for you know heat management and uh, switches and LEDs and a little display for SWR and power output. So uh, right now let's get to the machining uh, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so first order of operation is gonna be taking this massive piece of scrap heat sink material that's uh, 40 millimeters in height right here um, and it's about 280 millimeters wide so what we're going to do is we're going to cut along this cut line right here and we're going to cut right around here and the copper heat spreader is going to go right in the middle don't really worry about these extra holes are not going to really matter in transferring the heat from the heat spreader down into the, the heat sink. Also, I have an indication here for a thermostat. What we're going to do is like a safety cutoff. I have a thermostat that, that cuts at 60 Celsius and will restore at 50. <clears throat> Just in case we have some sort of uh, thermal management problem and the uh, air the airflow is not good enough um, or for whatever reason the ambient temperature is really high and we're not pushing enough cool air through this thermostat uh, will trip and I'm going to make a couple of M3 threaded holes here for the thermostat the copper heat spreader will be held down by M6s um, and there's going to be like nine of them. I have the uh, copper material right here. Give me one second while I get it out of the bag. This entire plate of copper I ordered online. Uh, it's a 200 millimeter uh, yeah, this is my drawing for it. So it's uh, 200 millimeters in length, approximately. Actually, I think I measured this one and it came out to 204 because I think it's a, a shear cut, machine cut, you know, not precision cut. Uh, but it is an extruded bar, as you can see. It's got the extrusion uh, feel to the outside and extrusion markings. So this bar is. 10 millimeters uh, in thickness, 100 millimeters 
in width, 200 millimeters wide. And as you can see, I made an indication here for the LD MOS. This is the MRF X1 K80H, and it's going to go right there. There's an input matching board. You can see with a slight gray area, an output matching board. So I did this whole drawing in Visio, and I put some scale reference markings on the horizontal and vertical axis. Made sure I printed it out one to one. So now I can just take a center point or center punch and just kind of make a mark right through the drawing. That's going to help in just you know making these holes real quick. Um, just punch right through the uh, the drawing, secure the drawing to the to the material. Just punch right through the X. You'll see it on the outside on the on the metal, and then just start uh, machining where you see the marks. So the second operation would be these little threaded holes to hold the input board and the output board here and here. So um, that would uh, occur after we get the mounting holes for the plate onto the heat sink. So you can see it's going to be a pretty stout heat sink. There is twin 60 millimeter fans that will sit here. Um, and flush air through the, the heat sink fins and hopefully cool this whole thing down. So I'm going to get to just doing some machining here and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, quick uh, intermission here. I just wanted to show you the uh, aluminum heat sink stock has been cut. Um, what we try to do here is clean up all these fins, deburr it all, Make it all nice and smooth like I did here, um, including your cut edge. Just uh, go to a belt sander and sand this all off, make it all nice and neat. Um, we already started marking the holes for the thermostat and I cut out my little template, which was my original drawing printed one to one. And uh, what I'm just going to do here is kind of secure it where I think I know the uh, copper uh, heat spreader is going to go, uh, leaving obviously room for the thermostat. Um, we're, uh, let me get a, a length measurement on that for you. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Got a little T-square here and we're looking at 9 and 5 eighths in length, approximately. Uh, and in height here, we're looking at uh, about five and a half. So nine and five eighths by five and a half. And I mentioned before, this thing is 40 millimeters thick. Um, so now we're going to secure the drawing to the top. I'm going to punch some holes first with a very fine point all. And then I'm going to go back over the holes with a heavier duty center punch um, and then start drilling some of this. Uh, these are going to be tapped obviously on this end. There'll be through holes counterboard for M6s. So be right back. Okay so we have some uh, M6 holes already tapped and uh, threaded here. This is going to line up with this guy right here, which I'm currently in the process of machining, um, we have some counterboard holes for M6. M6, I haven't done these yet, they will be done soon. And we have a slight trough here uh, for the LDMOS uh, transistor. This is only about uh, 10 thousandths deep. Um, and it's just a tiny bit wider than the LDMOS transistor itself. And why we're doing this is so that the LDMOS transistor will kind of register itself as it's getting soldered. It'll sit right perfectly perpendicular in this trough that I've milled. The input module or input uh, impedance adapter or impedance board will sit here, matching section the output the output will mat will sit right here all of these will be flush 
um, the ones that are underneath the uh, input and output matching. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna finish uh, uh, doing this piece of copper here, uh, counterboring the rest of these holes, and then we'll mount it to the heat sink as a test fit. And the next thing will be um, soldering the LD moss uh, to this uh, piece of copper. All right. Okay, so here's basically the uh, finished product. Um, made a few mistakes here, but otherwise, um, all the uh, socket head cap screws um, are pretty much down. The ones I was concerned with are these three that's underneath the output uh, matching board and this one which is underneath the input matching board. Just wanted to make sure that they were flush. These are maybe sticking up about a millimeter, that's fine. Again, like these are uh, flush. This one's a little sticking up a little bit, but they're all gonna be able to torque down correctly and make a really good uh, contact with the, um, the aluminum heat sink. Um, I added these L brackets here. Uh, these are one half by one and a half. Um, and what that's going to allow me to do is to have this actual fin sit up in the cabinet and not actually be touching. A little bit more airflow underneath that way. Um, this is the uh, thermostat. Um, it's installed with uh, M3 screws um, and uh, the fans will be uh, sitting right up here, right up front. So uh, the next part, like I said, is going to be um, actually uh, soldering the uh, LD moss and have it sit in this little trough uh, with the uh, drain pins going that way since that's the output side and the gate pins up here. Then once the, the uh, LED moss is sitting um, and, and soldered in place, I will mate up the input and output boards. I'll register the mounting holes, um, take the input output boards off, uh, make the holes in the copper threaded uh, M3 holes. Uh, I think there's two here and there's two here for the input. And there's two here and two here for the output. Um, so I'll get those threaded um, and then install screws and then the last thing would be to solder the pins to the boards and then we're ready for testing.